Hey there, I'm John at jpthewoodworker.com and today I want to show you how to make a mitered angle with a shooting board. So stick around to find out how this works. Okay, so let's get started. I have some birch plywood right here. I've already pre-cut a couple pieces, just two pieces of it here. And I use birch because it remains pretty stable and because there's five ply, it doesn't move a whole lot, so it's not gonna warp, it's not gonna cup, generally. So it's pretty stable wood, and that's what I want for my shooting board. Anyhow, I started into this before, and I kind of shelved this project. So let's see if I can put this back together for you, but basically it doesn't really matter what size your shooting board is, as long as it's big enough for your plane to sit on the side and be able to slide. So. It, you know, if you're using a bigger plane, you might want a little longer or whatever, but this this length right here is going to be even pretty good for probably a number six and maybe even a seven if I was going to use a seven, which I won't. But uh, anyhow, so let's see what we've got here. I cut these before. I can't remember exactly. Okay, so this is 19 and 3 eighths inches, and this is the same. And then the base piece here is eight and a half inches wide. And this top piece that sits on the base is five inches wide. So what I've done is I've just lined these up. I decided where I wanted my holes to be. And so I like things to look fairly uniform. And there's a lot of different ways you could do this. You could do a grid system where you just take and you mark areas on your board. And then you run a ruler or run a line from a ruler that way and across if you want to make them. I just kind of did it visually. There's also another way you can do it. In traditional woodworking, you may use something like this, where you have a set of dividers, and you can set them how wide you want them to be, and you can kind of just punch down in and, and move them around. Now let me see if I can get you a little bit better of an idea here. So if I were to set this here, I could do something like this. I could press down and punch a little dimple and then press down and punch a little dimple and then I would know where to drill and I could do the same thing up here and up here. I'm gonna to wanna to clamp this down because I don't want it to shift when I'm screwing it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this. And I'm also gonna check it for squareness one last time because sometimes the clamps move these things. and it looks square to me. Honestly, I don't even know if it matters if it's square to the bottom base piece now that I think about it. It's just this edge needs to be square and straight. And if you've got that, you'll be good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and screw this down. If I had a countersink bit, I would drill down a little bit so I could countersink my screws, which that's really what you wanna do but I don't have that tonight. I loaned that out. So I'll be going without it. So I don't want to torque it down too hard, but let's go ahead and secure this down to the base. Okay, well, it's a little late now, but I'm just going to check squareness one more time, and I'm good. So now I have my piece of oak clamped to my workbench. What I want to do now is make a 45-degree knife wall so that I can cut this. If you have a miter saw, feel free to use that. It would be quicker than this and definitely accurate, but this is what I have right at the moment. So, I've got my combination square. I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that's registered flat against the piece of wood on this side. Hold it nice and tight and make a knife wall. I'm gonna make a light pass and just make a few heavier passes. And that's going to help guide my saw. Now what I'm going to do 
is just use this piece of scrap wood. I wish I had a smaller piece. I don't, but that's okay. It's not going to affect anything. It's going to do what I want. And I'm just going to go ahead and line it up with that knife wall. And then I'm going to clamp it down. Hopefully that holds. It should hold. This is simply... Well, I'm just the tiniest bit off. You cannot be off on these. You have to be dead on your 45. Now I'm just going to take my crosscut saw. I'm going to just place it up against that edge, that fence, or I'm going to use it as a fence to guide my saw. And make my cut. All right, there we go. So now I want to check this, make sure that it is right on for 45 degrees, and it is dead on 45 degrees. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is take that piece of oak I just cut, and I want to go ahead and place it on top here and just see where my 45, just basically I'm laying it out. So I'm going to put it at a 45, make sure that my combination square is everything is dead on, it's registered, and that this is a 45 that it's sitting at. So once I get my piece there, it's a little heavy on the back end. It's a little awkward the way I'm doing it. But I don't want to waste any wood, and I want to lay this out so that I can mark it and cut it where appropriate. So I've got it here. I'm just going to go ahead and make a little mark right back here so that I know where I want to cut it. Now I'm going to use my square to make a line so I don't forget where I'm going to cut this. Okay, next step, cut this piece off. So I have my small piece to attach to the top. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing we did before a couple minutes ago. I'm going to mark another 45 degree and I'm going to go off that line that I marked a second ago. So register your combination square. So make your knife wall light pass at first, and then a little heavier, and a little heavier. I'm gonna go one more. And same as before, I'm gonna clamp this piece on as a guide. When you're doing this, just let the teeth glide over the wood. Don't put downward pressure. If your saw is sharp, it's gonna do the work. Okay, we'll check this to see if it's a good 45. And it is really nice. Okay, so we've got our cross piece here we want to put on. Now we want to take our combination square. Basically get that piece where I want it to be. I want this to be somewhere up in here because I'm sliding the plane down here. I've got my piece of wood down here that I'm putting against the fence. So I want it to be somewhere up here to give my plane a good long stretch to, to run on. That looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that with my pencil and we're going to clamp this down and screw it down. It's dead on. Now I drill my holes and I screw it down.
Okay, now we're ready to give this thing a try. Okay, so we're gonna give this a test. What I'm gonna do is make a knife wall on this scrap piece of wood here. I had a 45 cut already. I don't know if it was good or not, but I'm gonna go ahead and register my combination square. Make a couple light passes. And some heavier ones. I put a few extra in there this time. And I'm going to attempt to do a freehand cut that will get me in the ballpark of that 45. I'm going to follow my line. So now we're going to try out the shooting board. I'm going to lock it into place. You can see right here. That just cinches in the vise a little bit. Now we register our piece right here. Now don't set your plane heavy to begin with. This isn't made to take, take heavy cuts. Just advance it a little at a time. Let's see how this came out. And now I've got a nice, perfect 45 miter. So that's how the shooting board works. Okay, so today I faced a couple challenges. I had some screws breaking on me. I kind of fumbled around a little bit, but in the end, came out with a shooting board. That worked perfect. It got a perfect 45 degree miter angle there. So. In the upcoming weeks, when we make another picture frame, this time it's gonna have mitered joints at the frame and it's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna to go together so nice because we're using this shooting board. So this is a great way to get that mitered angle that you need. It's not complicated, it doesn't cost much, and it really works well. So if you don't wanna spend a lot of money on a miter saw, you can go this route. If you do have a miter saw, great, no problem. Use that too, so anyway. Uh, whatever works best for you, but I just wanted to give you that woodworking tip technique today. So thanks for joining me, and if you like this, please hit the subscribe button below and share with your friends. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, always remember life's most important order, at least what I think anyway. Love God, love each other, and woodwork. We'll see you next time.